hero Chise notices floating sheep in front of her, and Elias tells her to harvest their wool for her magic. She faces a few issues at first, but eventually lands a hefty haul. Elias praises Chise and walks away, but then she is attacked by a snowbug. Ruth tries his flame breath to kill it, but the snowbug is shown to be fire resistant. Luckily, Elias sends the monster away, after which it explains that it was in heat due to mating season. Now the demon lord asks the sleigh beggy how her time was at the land of dragons. She begins her description, but Elias spots a harmful memory inside her. He wants to erase it, but Chisa doesn't want to lose this memory. The demon lord is surprised to see that Chisa isn't scared of him, but she explains that it's because of her dad trained her well. However, she would go on to lose her family and started to forget about them till Elias came into her life. Chisa says that she doesn't want Elias to leave her, so he reassures our hero by saying that he will always be there for her. The demon lord is also grateful to Chisa for helping him understand humans better because he was cold and lonely before meeting her. Time passes by as our hero spends more time with their new family and bonds with Elias as if he is her new father. However, one night, a demon king named Ashen Eye shows up to meet Chise because he senses great energy in her. However, he gives our hero a skin that can turn her into a fox. Chise is told to explore the new powers that she has awakened, so she explores the forest, much to Elias's dismay. She thinks of setting out for a new adventure, but Elias doesn't like the idea because he doesn't want to feel lonely again. He shows up in his wolf form and convinces Chise to come back home. Later, Chise goes to sleep, but is suddenly alerted by a fairy girl who begs her to save her master Joel. Chise rushes to Joel with Ruth, but sees that he's at his wit's end. Elias arrives and reveals that the fairy girl is actually a vampire who wants to feast on Joel. This makes the vampire girl upset, so she walks away and Chise has to console her. Elias uses his human illusion to talk to Joel and says that he only has a week left to live. Joel's only request is to see the vampire girl, but isn't able to do it with his current eyesight. Chise comes up with the idea of using fairy ointment to help Joel's vision. It's not an easy task, but she manages to make the fairy ointment using her magical powers. The vampire girl applies it to Joel's eyes, and he finally gets to see her. Joel even recognizes her as a lover of poets and reveals he had no one to live for after his wife died. This leads to an emotional session between them, and Joel hands his life over to the vampire girl before vanishing into thin air. Chisa is thanked for her noble act and it makes her emotional. Suddenly, the beast boy Oberon shows up and asks our hero to hand over the rest of the fairy ointment because it's not allowed for humans to make it. She does as he says, but her shadow ring vanishes and she coughs up some blood. Oberon comments that she is suffering because she's a sleigh beggy who is only getting weaker by the minute. Even Ruth begins to bleed and it makes Elias nervous. Oberon slaps him and says they need to enter the land of the fairies. Elias immediately takes Chisa to the fairy cave where there's a place called Anthill. Our hero wakes up to a doctor named Shannon who cures her as much as she can. Meanwhile, Elias meets the Queen Fairy, who tries to seduce him into abandoning Chise for her. Now Shannon's horse husband shows up and acts creepy with the girls. Shannon reveals that he's actually a human who changed his form because of living in a fairy world for a long time. The girls go to a magic pond, which should be able to cure Chise's wounds. However, Shannon starts to choke her because she doesn't seem to like sleigh baggy girls. Chise struggles for breath but Elias gives her the energy to fight back. Shannon gets overpowered by our hero, and it impresses her greatly. She shows that Chisa's wounds have healed and this was just a test. Meanwhile, the maid Silky anticipates the return of our heroes, so she cleans up the house in an impressive fashion. Elias carries Chisa on their way back home, and our heroes come back home to an extremely overjoyed Silky. As winter sets in, a couple of Yule fairies greet Chisa and tell her to get ready for Yule season. Ruth feels useless for not being able to help his mistress when she needs him, but the others cheer him up and then our heroes engage in a fun-filled sequence. They come back home to Mistletoe and Elias mentions that it's customary to kiss under it. Chise happily kisses both Elias and Ruth, much to their joy. Then she is called to London to help her friend Alice because she wants to get a Christmas present for her master Renfred. The girls aren't able to find a suitable present and even have to face off against a couple of goons in the process. 
Luckily, Alice kicks one of them, and Ruth shows up in his beast form to scare the others away. Now, Tisa asks Alice about her past, and it triggers a flashback to when she was just an orphan girl. Renfred had found Alice inside an alley and brought her home to give her a better life. It wasn't easy in the beginning, as Alice had believed her master was a creep. But all of that changed when Renfred ended up saving her from a demon trapped inside one of his antique items. He ended up with a giant scar on his face, and it led Alice to finally accept him as her true savior. The story makes Chisa emotional, and then Alice gets a present for Renfred. Chisa comes back home to Elias, who appears angry at first, but is actually just worried for her. She gives him a Christmas present, and he does the same by giving her a giant teddy bear. Now we see a girl named Stella looking for her brother Ethan. Chissa shows off the crystal flowers on her teddy bear that Elias explains as a manifestation of her magic. Later, Stella bumps into Chise and asks for her help in finding Ethan. Our hero asks Elias for permission and he allows her to help Stella. The worried sister explains how she got into a fight with Ethan and lost him after that. Elias arranges a deal through Chise and then he shows himself. Stella is scared to see him, but Chise reassures her that he isn't a monster. The group enters a snowy forest looking for clues, and they run into a hungry vampire. Chisa offers him some blood to calm him down, and Stella is touched by her sacrifice. The group continues their mission, and finally bump into Ashen Eye, who has control of Ethan. He states that the bond between Ethan and Stella is now broken, so she can't even hear his name anymore. Ashen Eye decides to play a game, and hides both Elias and Ethan from the girls. He says that they must find their men by sunrise. Otherwise, they will be lost forever. Chase remembers she has a beast nose, so she transforms into a bear and sets off on her journey. Meanwhile, Ellis and Ethan bond with each other while he is in human form. After a brief search, our hero finds both of them, and everyone is happily reunited. Stella's parents show up and are happy to see Ethan with her as well. Chase is then introduced to them as Stella's new friend. To thank Chise for what she's done, Stella shows up with all kinds of sweets and then the girls decide to spend time with each other. Chise decides not to tell Stella about all the hidden creatures next to her, but does mention she's nervous about making a new friend. Suddenly, our hero spots Elias running away in his wolf form. She instinctively goes after him and leaves Stella with Ruth, so it's hard to keep up with Elias, so Chise transforms into a wolf and chases after him, but he gets the drop on her and takes her to a secret dungeon. Here, the demon lord keeps Chise bound by his dragon tentacles and mentions that he felt insecure when Chise was bonding with Stella. Elias loses control of his emotions and lets his jealousy consume him. He's about to eat Chise in the process, but she manages to use her magic cane to alert Ruth. The wolf beast rushes to his mistress, but isn't able to stop Elias. Chise finally decides to take extreme measures and threatens to kill herself if Elias doesn't stop. This makes the demon lord submissive, and then the couple walks back home. Later, Chise goes to meet her friend Angelica, because she sang a magical lullaby to put Elias to sleep. But now, he isn't waking up. Angelica realizes Chise's magic has become stronger, so she makes a solution for Elias. Our hero grows weak, but she makes sure she cures Elias with Angelica's solution, even though she overdoes it a bit. Later, some poachers hunt dragon babies, but are confronted by Lindel and his overpowered dragon. Suddenly, a demon boy named Joseph appears and kills the poachers in an instant. He also kidnaps the dragon babies and tortures them for his sick experiments. At night, Chise has a dream where Cartophilus attacks her in a demonic form, which he calls Joseph. She wakes up and goes downstairs to meet Renfred and his associates, who are in a meeting with Elias. They reveal that dragon babies are being stolen by Joseph, so Chise convinces Elias to help find them. Our hero learns that dragons sell for a lot of money, so she figures London is a good place to start their search. The team reaches an auction house where Chise was first sold to Elias. There's a dragon auction here and kicks off with a dragon that is seemingly bound in black tape. The bidding gets furious, but then Chise hears a mysterious voice behind her. The dragon suddenly transforms into a shadow monster after recalling his trauma and causes panic everywhere. He unleashes a fire blast upon everyone, but Chise can feel his inner anguish. She believes that the dragon simply wants to go home, so Elias helps her tackle the beast. The rest of the team distracts the dragon while Elias and Chise land on top of it. However, the dragon flies away and burns Elias with a fire blast to knock him down. 
with no other option, Jisa unleashes her magic and absorbs the dragon's curse, after which they both fall into a river. The team rescues her, but they also see that she has a dragon hand. Shannon heals Jisa, but Angelica slaps her for being reckless and absorbing the dragon's curse. Our hero is told that she'll eventually be consumed by this curse, but she is fine with the consequences. This makes Elias upset, so he walks away from the scene. Jisa has to hide her arm while out in the open, and then she has a chat with Elias, who blames himself for being unable to stop the dragon curse from infecting her. Regardless, Jisa makes the demon lord promise to stay with her forever. Now they meet a witch named Marielle, who tries to use her magic to cure the dragon hand. It's of no use, so Marielle asks her to join the witch gathering as it might help her. Stella shows up later to discuss Jesus' party, but it looks as if she's been possessed by someone, as she eavesdrops on Elias talking to the slave baggy about witches. Now Chisa and Elias perform a ritual, and reach the witch gathering, led by Phyllis, who is eternally stuck to a tree. However, they are told that the dragon hand is not curable. Our heroes go back to the real world, but Mariel whispers to Elias that he can save Chise by sacrificing another life. This makes him curious, so he calls upon a fairy named Ariel and assumes human form to carry out some research. He eventually runs into Stella, who becomes his target. Chise is shown to have adopted the Shadow Dragon and is greeted by Ariel. She suspects that Elias is up to no good, and then the Demon Lord arrives with Stella and conscious in his arms. Chise wants answers, but is put to sleep, and then she has a vision of the Earth Dragon. She gets inspired to stab herself back into consciousness, and then she rushes to find Stella. It turns out that Stella is going to be sacrificed by Elias in order to save Chise, but she's shown to be possessed by Joseph. Chise stops the sacrifice and berates Elias for trying to kill her friend. She then goes to talk to Stella, but she reveals herself as Joseph and asks her hero to strike a deal. She agrees and is transported away from Elias. Now Joseph takes Chise to all her trapped dragons and says that he wants her dragon arm. He offers one of his own immortal parts in exchange for it, so Chise agrees to switch eyes as part of the agreement. However, Joseph goes back on his deal and knocks out Chise. Our hero is taken to a flashback where she gets to see her family when she was a little girl. She isn't able to wake up from this dream, and then she sees a fragment that is a part of Joseph's body. The flashback resumes, and Chise sees the time her dad left home to fight a demon. He never came back, and it led to the family suffering from monsters as well as human society. Chisa's mom eventually went crazy and tried to kill her own daughter, but realized what she was doing and jumped off the balcony after that. It's a traumatizing flashback, but her hero liberates herself and makes a deal with a fragment, revealed to be Cartophilius. This allows her to wake up and attack Joseph with her dragon arm. Meanwhile, Elias goes crazy looking for Chisa and becomes a demonic beast. A golem king tries to subdue him, and then the fairy queen shows up to trick him into being with her forever. However, Elias resists her temptation and convinces her to summon the other team members to find Chise. Meanwhile, Phyllis berates Mariel for telling Elias about the sacrifice method. Now Chise gets a glimpse into Joseph's past, where he was an ostracized graveyard boy, believed to be the son of a witch. One day, he comes across Cartophilius who begs him for help. Joseph does his best to help Cartophilius, but he makes no progress because the demon boy is immortal. Joseph eventually grows frustrated with the way he's treated by humans and merges with Cartophilius to become a vengeful demon. Back to the present, Joseph frees himself from Chise and attacks her dragon arm. But luckily, Elias and the others arrive to save the sleigh beggy. A fierce battle kicks off, but Joseph unleashes all the demon he's absorbed and they fight the team. Joseph escapes in the middle of the battle, and Chise chases after him. She gets attacked by a demon, but Elias saves her, and she follows Joseph into another dimension. She eventually finds him, after meeting Mariel in her own bull form, and they begin a battle. However, Ash and I also shows up and awakens the dragon energy inside Chise. Joseph unleashes an insect army upon her, but Ruth, Ariel, and Elias come to the rescue. Then Elias and Ariel unite to form an overpowered demon god and attack Ash and I. They easily kill him with one strike, and then Chisa tries to subdue Joseph. He stabs her through the chest, but this was a trap for Elias and Ruth to subdue him and take out his immortal eye. Now Chisa hugs Joseph and sings him a lullaby to put him to sleep. Our hero seemingly dies, but the Cartophilius fragment keeps her alive and says that only a dragon will be able to kill them. Chise wakes up next to Elias, Ruth, and Silky, all of whom are thrilled to see her. 
Joseph is still shown to be asleep, and then Chisa is given tons of birthday surprises by everyone she loves, including Stella. Now, our hero dresses up as a bride and meets Elias. He calls her beautiful, and then this way Peggy gets married to the demon lord in an emotional sequence. The new husband and wife go home to live happily ever after. The end. Like, share, and subscribe for more updates. See you soon!